One shall stand, one shall fall. Audition, and the, the material was there. I saw the illustrations of what Optimus Prime was. It was a truck, then it transformed into this body, and then back into that Kenwood and with the tractor trailer, you know. So I was saying, okay, this is a huge character. He's big, and he's strong and all that stuff and he I said kids are gonna love this you know <laughs> so I read the script and it was I could have just been these could have been the words the words were my name is Optimus Prime <laughs> from the planet Cybertron <laughs> It just flowed, flowed out of me, and I, 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 mean, I, I could very well have said, My name is Larry Cohen, <laughs> <laughs> United States Marine Corps. You know, but, but that's uh, that's the voice that came out of me, and it was it was Larry, and those distinctive words that applied to every script that we did was be strong enough to be gentle, and that's carried me all the way through since 1984. Until 1986, when they. <laughs> You're out of here, Cobble. You're out of here. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because, I mean, for, for, for some people, I mean, especially myself, you know, 1986, we're talking, I'm, I'm a six or seven year old boy sitting at home watching these. And the death of Optimus Prime is the first, I know for me and maybe for some others, it really was the first instance of that for some young people and it, it, it's this memory that sticks with us when we remember how emotional we got at, at the death of Optimus. What was your initial impression of that? I mean, obviously, um, I don't know if you would be happy that they killed off a character that you were, you were portraying. Well, you know, there was, there was a lot of confusion from my end because uh, I, I'm looking at the script and uh, the movie with Frank Walker, and Frank and I are good friends, you know, and, and we're sitting next to each other, and, and I get to the page, whatever it was on, and I said, Frank, what, you, what page are you on? <laughs> he said, I'm on page 17, I'm getting whacked. <laughs> I mean, this is it. He said, what do you mean? I, I've got a death scene here. I'm doing a death scene, and he's not coming back. <laughs> so I felt like hell. I mean, it was really a pretty sick feeling. I said, inside, you know, you, you you take it on yourself, and you say, what did I do? What did I do wrong? I mean, who did I piss off? <laughs> What the hell? You know, I mean, yeah. I, it was a rotten feeling, and uh, and I didn't bother with it. You know, I just said, "That's it. It's over with." Let you get on with your life. You know, I I left that and just went on to the other jobs and just put it out of my mind until they called me to do the feature film, and years and years later. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I believe it was, if my math is correct, maybe a good 20 years before between the time yeah. that the animated series had ended and the live action yeah, film kind of like that. Yeah. Had, had come around. What was your reaction when you found out that they wanted you back to portray? Well, I had to audition. Oh, did you? You actually had to audition for the role of Optimus Prime? I had to audition for the character I created. It was so strange. What Hollywood's like. Yeah, that's that's crazy <laughs> to me. 
that you would have to audition for a character that you brought to life. Yeah. So, but I mean, again, it had been 20 years, but thankfully, I know I, I, I'm sure other people were agree that would agree with me. You got the job. Yeah, I did. And you came back and you got to portray that character. Yeah, I, I felt really nervous about it too. I didn't have that old confidence I used to have when I was doing the series with the guys. You know, we had a great time. It was always fun. You know, we always had something going on in the booth. You know, where we where we recorded. And of course, Frank Welker, he would always supply something strange, surprisingly funny, always. I mean, it wouldn't, if, an, if you were reading a line and you'd hear, like a, a faucet dripping, I can't do it the way he does it, but you go, <laughs> that producer would director would be saying, can we get some order back in there? Can we get uh, get going? Can we do that line again? Let's see, this is line 54, take three. <laughs> or you do a, an electric motor or you know, an elevator <laughs> from behind the wall. Uh, we had so much fun doing that. But back then in the 80s when you guys were recording the series as opposed to you know what they do now, where you you are usually alone in a studio. Back then, in, in the eighties, were were there many of you in the booth at the same time? Yeah, well, there'd be probably about twelve of us, all recording together. Yeah, we'd all be in a line, and then we'd be looking straight towards the glass barrier between us, where the producer, directors, and uh, other people <coughs> sat listening to our madness. I think that's where a lot of the magic is lost nowadays sometimes is because it, it is an individual performance now where you listen to the recording of somebody else and you kind of interact with that. But with having everybody in the room together, yeah. it's very easy to feed off of one another to, well, I, to bring I, the characters more to life. I don't think that's changed very much. I think we still, although I haven't done one for a while, <laughs> um, yeah, at the movies I, I worked alone, mm -hmm. you know. I would work with Michael Bay, and uh, in this the last one, uh, the uh, Rise of Beast. This is with Stephen Kaplan. He's he's a fantastic young director that I just got along with so so well. He's what a brain! You're gonna like this movie, folks. I'm I'm excited. I uh, I know you can't talk too much about it because the movie hasn't released yet. But I'm I'm actually excited. I'm getting to go to a screening of it on Monday. So I'm going to be seeing it within the next two days, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. This so, Monday? Um, this coming Monday, I'm going that's to That's the screen. premiere. I mean, that's the, oh, you were? Yeah. I get to see it about <laughs> a little, little less than a week early, so. Uh, I'm going to it too, but it's in New York. Oh, now mine's here in Philly. Oh. Yeah, so mine's in town. Mine's in New York. <laughs> <laughs> you want to switch? No. Okay. No, I would <laughs> I, I wouldn't either. Uh, if anybody in the audience does have questions for Peter, we're going to try and get through a couple of them. I don't know how many we're going to get through uh, as we go through, but uh, before we before we get to that, you know, over the years there have been different versions and iterations of Transformers in which you've reprised Optimus, uh, obviously, uh, and usually they're kind of variations of the series itself. Uh, are there any like? dominant traits of Optimus that you always make sure, with the exception of obviously leadership and uh, and, uh, and and such, that you, you want to make sure, these are traits you want to make sure you carry over to the next iteration or the next project of Transformers? Well, um, I, it all depends on, upon what's written in front of me. You know, I don't have much control over what to say, and sometimes I have to say things that I don't want to say, and I've only had that a couple of times, and I, I lost. There was one line in the movie where I said, I'll kill them all, you know, I said, that's not going to his prime, you know. So, but I was forced to say it, and uh, under the circumstances, I think uh, it may have raised a few eyebrows, but in the long run, it was understood that it was a a very sick prime. He had a bad cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, all right, let's see if maybe we can get in a couple of these questions. Uh, over here, uh, your name and your question. Uh, my name is Kyle, and um, 
huge Transformers fan. But you also, I believe, did the opening narration for another cartoon I was very, very fond of, Voltron. Do you recall that? Defender of the Universe. <laughs> Yes. Wow. Commander Hawkins. So how did that uh, come about? And um, do you remember the narration? Could you give us a little? Uh, how did the how did the, narr how the the job of narrating for Voltron come about? And do you remember what the narration was? Uh, no, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old and I forget. <laughs> Jeez. I don't really I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised that you would bring that up, uh, considering this is an Optimus Prime moment. <laughs> Voltron, defender of the universe. I, uh, well, it, it, that we stuff love all your right over my head, half that stuff, I didn't understand what it was all about anyway. <laughs> well, I never got to see the whole show, and I only read my lines, and... Uh, who knows what that was all about? <laughs> well, then, if you want an Optimus Prime question, so after you died in the movie, you actually did come back in the third season. They had um, Dark Awakening and then the return of Optimus Prime. How did it feel when you got that call, we need you back? The movie? Af after the animated movie, you came back in season three. For two shows. Yeah, for, for a few episodes. Yeah, a couple of episodes. Well, I, 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 I learned years and years later that I was brought back because mothers in America and Canada were so upset by the activities of their children hiding under the bed, uh, hiding in closets, they wouldn't come out, uh, they would be so afraid, they, I mean, it, it affected them. And I was stunned to hear that, I had no idea that there were a lot of children that were affected by that. And so I did have to come back for those few shows to appease that whole thing, which I thought was rather strange, you know, strange, you know, that, that's Hollywood. You, you never get your hopes up on anything because you never know how long something's gonna last. And you've just worked your, your craft and you're working hard, never give up, never give in, you know, just plod along and Sometimes you get lucky, and uh, uh, you got lucky because years later I discovered that a lot of kids had grown up and they were talking about a feature film, and they started getting on, on the internet, of course, and they started talking about me, and uh, I wasn't paying particular attention to the internet because I didn't have a computer. <laughs> I put some lot stuff about, you know? But anyway. I still had a dial phone for crying out loud. Hello? Yeah, hi. This is Peter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Telephones. So <laughs> But the internet had so much going for it, you know, for, for, for my inclusion into that, uh, that they eventually, you know, said, okay, you know, it's gonna, okay, or whatever they do. And anyway, uh, I went to the audition, with Michael Bay, and I said, I was very nervous. I mean, I was really nervous. And I was also, uh, they were auditioning for Ironhide, and so there was a girl, there was a scene, and there was a girl reading Ironhide and then Optimus Prime. Michael Bay sitting here, the girl is sitting here, somebody sitting there, I'm sitting here. And she started reading Ironhide. She said, oh, whatever the line was. And I said, here, let me do that. I do Ironhide. Oh, come on, Prime, let's kick some butt. <laughs> Relax, cool it. We'll get them on our own time. Oh, I'm not gonna do it now, Prime. No. And Michael Bay sitting there going, 
<laughs> Did I hear that? You know. <laughs> okay, 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 that's that's enough. That's enough. And the girl was sitting there going, <laughs> she's looking straight up at me like that. It was bizarre. I was nervous. Uh, you know, uh, who knows? You know, you just give it your shot, give it everything they have. And you say, you walk away, you're getting into your car, and you're saying, what am I doing here? I just auditioned for Iron Hyde and Optimus Prime. And that had, to, right, sir, that had to get you the job, though. <laughs> just portraying both of those for Michael Bay and just seeing him drop jaw. Well, I don't know if he dropped I made that up. Sorry, Michael, if you're on <laughs> I, I buy it. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you so much. All right, thanks for your question. Uh, let's go over to this side here. Uh, what's your name and your question? Hi, my name is uh, Benson. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, Mr. Cohn, for coming out to visit us here in Philly. Um, thank you. I've been a uh, huge uh, G1 Optimus Prime fan since I was a kid. Um, I really enjoyed the nobility of character and how strong he was. And then once they went ahead and took him out, I was done with Transformers. But then, when they went ahead and came out with the series Transformers Prime, and then you voiced the character, I got a chance to voice the character again. That was the, the time that it felt me like, oh, this is, I wish this is how it went originally when they did the character. Did you enjoy that show? Absolutely. You know, I, I had fun doing it. I mean, you know, I, if we don't, you know, the original show, we didn't have many girls in. <laughs> and this one, we had a few girls. It was kind of fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And they were great people. I mean, really wonderful people. And to be, you know, teamed up with uh, with Frank Welker again, you know, this is it was just heaven. Sorry, it was. I'm sorry, it went away. I guess, you know, that's Hollywood. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, my two questions are: uh, What was your experience doing the G1 Optimus Prime versus the Transformers Prime version of him? Like uh, how you approach the character. And uh, what was your experience also like versus when you're doing G1 Optimus Prime, like doing the recordings and everything versus how they did it in Transformers Prime? It kind of felt like the character, um, like it was great for me when I was a kid, and then Transformers Prime, it even felt like the character grew up also for like an older audience as well as like younger audience as well too. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. Uh, I Basically, I think Prime uh, is Prime. You know, the essential qualities of Prime remain. Uh, they're so they're so embedded in you know my brother Larry, and of course the uh, the writers and the scenario, whatever it may be, always seem to remain true. Uh, and if it wasn't true, I would try to make it true. But I don't remember having any difficulty or m memories of, of any of those instances where it was a problem or a dilemma of any kind. It was always natural. Prime seemed to be the, you know, the epitome of a great hero. And he, those, those, those traits are inherently strong and, you know, Forever, you know, they they stay with the power of of, of good leadership. You know, I was very lucky, very lucky. Optimus has always been Optimus, no matter what project that he has been a part of. Whatever Transformers, whatever iteration of Transformers we get, the Optimus has always been the leader that we've we've always loved, and we ourselves would follow if we were in the situation to do so. Yeah. So the character the characteristics have always carried over. <laughs> so but thanks for your question. All right, thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Uh, all right, let's go over to this side here. What's your name and your question? Hello Mr. Cullen. My name's Greg. Um, as you mentioned earlier, you also voice one of my favorite Autobots, Ironhide. I was wondering which is the more difficult role to play, Optimus or Ironhide? Oh no, I I well, you know what during production back in those days, uh, Frank would of, often have to talk to himself, you know, as another character. Uh, I did on several occasions, and uh, it was fun. It was really fun. I gave you a little taste of that 
earlier, well, we, we were a little more polished back in those days, you know, because you had a script in front of you, you didn't have to add lib it. <laughs> but, no, but it's interesting. Yeah, a lot of us had to do, uh, kind of, you know, scenes with uh, a conversation between themselves. It's, it's kind of fun. You, you, you end up having to do it over, though, you know. Yeah, but you try. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll switch back over to the side. Uh, your name and your question. Hi. Hi, Peter. Um, my name is Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I grew up with you since I was about six, seven years old, and I made it a point for me and my brother to not miss a single episode of Transformers. And even with Transformers Prime, I have my um, twin nephews watching that, and they really enjoy the show. Uh, my question is, with every script that you've read and performed, which script do you believe was the most challenging script that you performed? Uh, so of, of any script that you got, whether it be of any um, G1, uh, Transformers Prime, which script do you think was maybe the most challenging to perform? Well, that's a good question. I, you know, oddly enough, every script that you get is, you know, is a challenge. But, uh, it, but some scripts aren't as good as others. And uh, you don't have any control over that, but and some have more action than others, and some have more messages than others. Uh, generally speaking, I, I don't think we ever concentrated on that as a problem or as an issue of any kind. We we read our scripts, you know, and and sometimes we only read them once, and then we were taping, you know, and sometimes we they taped before we even read it. <laughs> no, maybe not. I don't remember. It's so long ago. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember any problems with them. But then there's a lot of things I can't remember anyway. <laughs> Jeez. Did that help? <laughs> it did. Yeah, it actually did. I love you, man. That's good. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot for your question. Uh, we got a couple minutes to get in, maybe one or two more before we're, we're going to start to wrap things up. So we'll go over this side. What's your name and your question? Uh, hi there, Mr. Coleman. My name is Ilya. And of course, like many others here, I grew up with you, not just as the voice of Optimus, but also the narrator on Toonami. So I remember your yes. narrations for shows like Gundam Wing. And you know, you've just been around so often, you've inspired at least one generation to dream and imagine about the future and about how technology can beneficially interact with humanity and so on. And I'm thinking like the world has changed so much since you first uh, started. So what excites you uh, most about the way the world is changing, especially with respect to technology and what, what also concerns you? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very, Detailed question. Uh, of course, I mean, and I'd ask it to Optimus Prime himself. <laughs> You're doing that on purpose. You <laughs> just want to lay me out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, the simple version of that question comes down to one. Oh, oh, oh. So, you know, what... What makes you most excited uh, about the future? What are you most optimistic about, no pun intended, uh, with regards to, you know... In regards to anything, or like specifically technology, uh, or... A a anything really, like... Yeah. So basically just what gets you excited for the future? Like, what, what yes. about the future gets you, like, are you interested in or to maybe learn more about? Just something that gets you excited. Oh, uh, I, you know... I got a call from the executive producer of Paramount Pictures and uh, talked to me on the phone. He said, Peter, I just want to tell you that uh, we're going to be doing more features and uh, I want you to know that you are going to be Optimus Prime for as long as you want to be Optimus Prime. I 
I was very happy about that myself. <laughs> <laughs> but then if there was a flip side to the coin, he said there was uh, there, the animated uh, shows that we're going to do, uh, we're going to be using, uh, using a younger prime. And uh, which makes sense, you know. He said that the features, you are going to be on this prime. But for the TV series and all that other stuff, and the, whatever they call them, films and whatever those words are, fancy words for doesn't cost a dime. <laughs> we, we get these things done for nothing, you know. We just put them on screen, look them over here, you know, get the writers to strike, and all that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be doing animated and using a younger person. I said, well, that makes perfect sense to me, you know. Here's a guy that's going to be training, you know, the way I trained <laughs> you guys when you were six years old. <laughs> you know, that's a long time ago. And uh, I could understand that. Um, but see what comes what may. You know, I look forward positively and I look forward to whatever they're going to do in the future. But live for the present. And uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you this honestly because I love you guys and girls. <laughs> you know, I love you. I love you. Thanks. I feel a way about you guys, and I I hope that I'm around for a long time to do more features, and uh, because I have it in me, and I I don't want to not do it. I really want to do it. So it gives me a a real incentive to be with you guys. Yeah, you warm my heart, and I think you're the greatest group of people. Everywhere we go, I mean, you're just the same. You're just wonderful people, and I love you for that. Woo! I, uh, we're coming to the end, so I apologize for anybody whose question didn't get asked, but I really, personally, I don't really think we could have ended this panel any better than that. Uh, so, um, be, before we let you go, I, I, I just want to tell you, and I'm sure I speak for everybody in this room, you have been and will always be Optimus Prime to each and every one of us. Uh, and before we get out of here and I let you say goodbye, any way we can just wrap this panel up with an Autobots rollout. dreams. The future is built on dreams. One shall stand, one shall fall. Peace is the right of all sentient beings. Autobots, transform and roll out! Thank you, Peter. Nice. Love you, Peter.